G'day trendsetters, I'm John with Gravel Cyclist. I'm coming to you today with a long-term review of the Cannondale Topstone Carbon Lefty Full Suspension Gravel Bike. If you're a regular to the Gravel Cyclist YouTube channel or the GravelCyclist.com website, you'll already have seen my unboxing and features video of this particular bike and my side-by-side -side comparison of this bike up against the Niner MCR9RDO. Both of those videos are linked in the description below. For those folks who didn't catch my features video, or for those who are interested in some of the findings I've discovered since taking collection of this bike, keep watching. This is the Topstone Lefty 3, and stating the obvious, the Lefty Oliver Fork gives this machine a rather unconventional look. The fork provides up to 30 millimeters of active suspension travel. It can be ridden active or closed by the flick of a simple switch atop the fork while riding, but there's no middle ground. It's either on or off. At the rear of the bike is Cannondale's Kingpin suspension system that features one pivot that when combined with the seat post supplied by Cannondale provides up to 30 millimeters of suspension effect. Basically, it's flexing the chain stays and the seat post to provide that suspension. The frame itself is constructed from Cannondale's ballistic carbon, and to be expected nowadays, all of the gear and brake housings are routed internally, keeping things nice and neat. There's support for a rear fender mount, a third bottle cage beneath the down tube, and one of my personal favorite features, a top tube mount for a bento box, super handy, and you can see I've got one in use right now. This one's by Apogira, and that review is linked in the description below. Unfortunately, the lefty fork isn't so handy for carrying anything, there's no attachment points, so the bike packing folks might be disappointed in that regard. The frame also supports an internalized dropper seat post. The drivetrain is a mix of Shimano GRX1 by Mechanical Components, meaning Cannondale uses different spec GRX parts throughout this bike. So meaning the shifters, brakes and rear derailleur are all from different series of GRX. On the subject of GRX, be sure to check out my long-term reviews of GRX DI2 and Mechanical in 1x and 2x flavors. Both are linked in the description below. The crankset is a Cannondale 1 unit and is fitted with a 40 tooth chain ring. I'll say up front, I'm disappointed that Cannondale specs every single Topstone Carbon Lefty with one by drivetrains. There's not a single two by option to be found on any of these pre-built bikes. More on that later. And the crankset rolls on Cannondale's very own BB30 bottom bracket. Some people love them and some people don't, but I've always had a good rapport with this bottom bracket system. Onto the stock wheel set, and it's sitting right here. You might notice I've got non-stock wheels on the bike. The rims are WTB STI23 tubeless rims. They're paired to a Formula hub on the rear and a Cannondale Lefty 50 hub on the front. The stock tyres are WTB Venture TCS Lite, which I also have reviewed on the GravelCyclist.com website. In addition to the stock wheel set, I've been running the Knight Composite 650B all-road carbon wheel set sitting right there, and right on the bike at the moment, the Atomic Carbon Gravel 650B wheel set with Bird, that's B-E-R-D spokes. I have reviews of both these wheel sets coming soon to the website and YouTube channel. The bike is shipped with a Shimano SLX 11-42 cassette, which right now is fitted to the Knight Composite wheel set. When that's combined with the 40 tooth front chainring, you've got a high gear of 40 by 11, and a low gear of 40 by 42. That's nice for climbing and so on, but the 40 by 11 easily tops out. And for the really steep stuff, 40 by 42 simply doesn't cut it. So there is obviously a lot of gear range lacking with this particular gear setup. Generally, that's not a problem for a lot of gravel you may encounter, but I think this bike is screaming out for a two by drivetrain. This one by gearing setup is simply a massive compromise that has you wanting for more. Now with that said, the 11 to 42 cassette is simply overkill for areas such as North Florida where I reside much of the year and Southern Georgia where I've ridden this bike quite extensively. So I thought to myself, I should probably swap the stock cassette for something like an 11 to 32 or an 11 to 34. So a quick bit of background on Shimano cassettes. The 11 speed mountain bike cassettes by Shimano such as 1142 they will fit onto a 10-speed Shimano cassette body, whereas cassettes like 11 to 32 and 11 to 34, they're a true 11-speed cassette. You need an 11-speed cassette body. So I guess what I found out, Cannondale specced the stock wheel set with a 10-speed, you heard that right, a 10-speed cassette body. 
That is a 10 speaker set body right there. You cannot fit a true 11 speaker set onto it. So it's like Cannondale cheaped out with this bike. Who in their right mind would spec out a 10 speaker set body on a bicycle being sold in the 2020 model year? That is absolutely insane. It's not 2010 anymore, Cannondale. I'm wondering if Cannondale had a bunch of wheels laying around from the original slate bike, perhaps these wheels, and they just wanted to unload them onto the new Topstone Carbon Lefty. I really don't know, but it blows my mind. All things considered, it's a pretty crappy decision if they're trying to save a few dollars. Now, there's not all negatives to this wheel set. It's very stout, it's not light, but it's very bomb proof and it makes for a great training wheel set, barring, of course, the 10 speaker set issue. So this issue may not apply to a lot of people depending on where you live. But honestly, if you want this bike to sing, do yourself a favor, upgrade these wheels immediately with something like the Knights or something like the Atomics. The Topstone Lefty will thank you. The other thing that is highly annoying about this bike is Cannondale's propensity to shift their drivetrain and rear wheel by six millimeters to the right. So that means not only do you have a specialized front wheel for this bike, you also have a specialized rear wheel for this bike. So effectively, any wheel set for this bike is orphaned. You cannot run them on any other bike. Now, I did want to mention in this video, the Nona MCR9RDO, another full suspension bike, which I've also reviewed, has none of those problems. You can ride any wheel set you like. So it's definitely something to consider. Biggest pain in the butt with the Cannondale Topstone Lefty Carbon is swapping out the front wheel. I've got a third party wheel here, the Atomic wheel set, which I'm reviewing separately. So you mount the wheel onto the axle like that, just for now, I've only got three rotor bolts because I was having some problems getting this rotor lined up with the brake caliper, which breaks away and this uh, operates in a quick release type mechanism. So if, just for now, line the wheel up on the axle, and there's a fixing bolt, and you tighten it down. Okay, that's done. Next I saw the brake and there are three holes total to line up. So it's not that difficult. Okay, now it's put in place. Next you need to lock it down. Let me turn around the camera and show you the quick release lever. There's the quick release lever. Lock it down. Now the brake is installed. Finally, the cockpit parts are an old Cannondale affair from the seat post to the stem to the flared 16 degree handlebars. Now I did have to substitute the stem for a Ritchie WCS in 110 millimeters to attain my fit. Incidentally, this is a size 54 or a size small. It's actually 54.5 centimeters on the top tube. This bike fits me perfectly. It looks pretty good, I think. And don't forget that fitting is very personal. What works for me may not work for you. So this message goes out to the internet keyboard hero fitting experts who might think that my fit's off or your fit is off. Ignore what they got to say because they should probably be folding their mum's laundry or cleaning out her gutters. Moving on from that, one final gripe. Whoever set this bike up at Cannondale HQ, they did a pretty horrible job of sizing all the cables. Now, obviously I'm running a longer stem, but all of the cable housings were cut too short. There was very little room for expansion, but I managed to get around that problem by slamming a stem, which works nicely for me. I also changed out the stock headset cap, and you can turn the bike no problems at all, though it's a bit tight, but I've had no drama riding the bike in a regular manner. Okay, so that's all of the features and most of my complaining covered. How does the Cannondale Topstone Carbon Lefty ride? First thing to point out, this is not a drop bar mountain bike. For those experts who have never built a bike, say it is, get a new routine because it's pretty bloody tiresome. The Topstone Lefty is built for drop bar riding with appropriate top tube lengths, angles, and so on. Mountain bikes have long top tubes that require a silly short stem should you try to convert it to drop bar. This bike does not have that issue. The Lefty Oliver Fork, whilst unconventional, works and it works well. Once you've got your body weight set, you can forget about it until it needs maintenance. I haven't touched air pressure since my good friend JD at Super Cool Bike Shop helped me set up the bike for my weight. The fork is easy to switch on and off, but I leave it open all of the time. I cannot detect the fork bobbing like you would with a dual leg fork, which is a nice positive. The fork may look strange, but it's pretty nice. 
30 millimeters of travel doesn't sound like much, but bombing these descents, I could smash lines and take less care with on this fork. It really enhances the descending experience, soaks up bumps well, and it's a plus for folks who lack confidence in this area. It definitely makes descending a lot safer, and on the steeper descents, put your weight behind the saddle, point and go. It's that nice. And the Kingpin rear end also helps the course. The Kingpin suspension isn't a gimmick, it really works. You can feel the bike sag beneath you when you first sit atop the bike, but not to the point it's a soft tail noodle that bobs around non-stop. I couldn't detect any excessive bobbing as I pedaled, but a lot of this may depend on your pedaling style. I like to think I'm pretty smooth on the pedals and found the rear end really did smooth out a lot of the smaller bumps. In fact, I chose this bike to ride the SBT VRTL ride in Gainesville, Florida recently for 140 miles. Whilst the August 16, 2020 weather was super effing hot and I cracked due to the heat, but I did finish, the bike itself was flawless. I was comfy all day, also helped by my choice of an 11 to 34 cassette and the lovely atomic carbon wheels with bird spokes and Panarassal Gravel King tires in 650B by 48 millimeter. Absolutely sublime. The Topstone Carbon Lefty climbs well, and if you're like me, seated is the way to go. Because of the suspension, you can pick lines you wouldn't ordinarily, just like when you go descending on this bike. The merits of 650B wheels play nicely here. You can flick the bike around, and it responds well to directional changes, which is important for tricky climbing. With this said, it's not a lively bike out of the saddle, but that's to be expected. You could certainly cross over to pavement with this bike, but if you like doing group rides when COVID isn't around on your gravel bike, this isn't the bike for that task. Weighing about 22.5 pounds with these trick wheels, pedals, bottle cages, etc. This bike is a lot handier than stock and really becomes a nice all-day endurance gravel bike and one you could easily race. It wouldn't be my first choice for a flatter race, but if a rider event featured some tricky, gnarly terrain and lots of climbing, say Hilly Billy Roubaix or Pisgah Monster Cross, I choose this bike without question. The only trouble with this bike, and I pointed it out earlier, is the gearing. If this was my bike, I'd ditch the one by immediately, slap on a two by crank set, a tighter cassette, and I'd be able to climb anything with no compromises. This bike rides nicely on not so crazy single track, obviously more forgiving than a rigid bike. So who is this bike for? Well, it could be for someone who wants an all day comfy ride without too much complexity or additional weight, or someone who lacks confidence in the descending department. Speaking of descending, be sure to check out my video linked in the description below, where I share descending tips from Dave Zabriskin and other talented riders. As stated earlier, this bike excels in areas such as descending. If it wasn't for the annoying wheel set offset, or the dodgy stock wheel set, and it's limited one by gearing, I could highly recommend this bike. Now, if you can live with some of those things, and that's obviously going to depend on where you live, these traits might be meaningless to you, so this might be a fantastic bike for you. Incidentally, Cannondale has the Topstone Lefty 1, which is fitted with SRAM's excellent Eagle ETAP 1 by Bill, which has far wider gearing, and also you get an extra cog. So that might be another option for you to consider if you're looking for a bike like this. If money was no object, I would strip this bike completely down to a frame and I would spec it out with some really nice lightweight parts with a two by build and I could turn it into a really nice high suit racing or fun machine with the advantages of some suspension travel. So there you have it, the Cannondale Topstone Carbon Lefty ridden and reviewed. I realize nowadays there's so many, a plethora, a Imperial Ton and more of gravel bikes available on the market today for you to choose. So I hope that my video went some way into helping you make an informed purchase decision. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe to the Gravel Cyclist YouTube channel if you haven't already. And don't forget to click the bell button to be notified of future videos as they appear on the channel. I've got heaps more content in the hopper, including reviews and ride experience videos and more. Tell your mates, tell your friends, tell your family members, tell everybody. I'll see you in the next video.